All right, so now that we've explored the idea of closures from a more theoretical standpoint in the previous videos, now I want to give you a more practical example of how to use closures and what you can do with them in code. So for that, I want to start defining a function that I call calculate. And this function is going to take two arguments. In fact, it's going to take three, but I'll leave the third one open for now. So let's only consider the two integers it takes and the return value. And only to make the compiler happy, I'm returning zero for now. But let's take a look at the function signature and check out what the function signature tells us about this whole function. So in fact, we can already see that the function takes two integers and returns two integers. So um, the only thing that is not quite clear up until this point is what is happening to the two integers to compute the third one. But it seems to be pretty clear that this whole function intends to do something to the two integers, combines them using some mathematical operation, and then re returns the result of that operation. All right, but what is it that should actually be happening to the two integers? Well, let's leave that up to the caller of the calculate function by introducing a third argument here. And the third argument is what I'm going to call my function. And this is of type int int to int. So it is a function that takes two integers and returns one integer. All right, so now the calculate function has three arguments. And the third one is actually a function that takes two integers. So Usually, if we only have regular um, values inside our, um, inside our function bodies, we will just use them for any kind of computation that we need to do. But how about using a function that is being passed in as an argument into another function? Well, first let me ask you, what is it that we generally do with functions after they've been defined and implemented? Well, we call them. The only way we can make use out of a function that has been implemented somewhere is by actually calling it, by using its functionality. And the same goes for a function that is being passed into um, another function as an argument. The only thing that we can really do with this function in the function body is calling it. So in this case, we could do it like this. We know that my function takes two integers um, as input arguments, and we have two integers available. So let's just go ahead and pass uh, these two integers into a call to my function. And we know how to call a function, right? We only write the name of a function, and then we pass in the required arguments in a pair of parentheses. And this is exactly what's happening here. We're passing in the values of a and b into the function my function, and everything um, that is happening inside this function is up to the caller, so they can define what input arguments to provide and how the two integers that are being provided should be combined in order to compute a result. But also notice that the my function that we're passing in has a return value. So it not only takes two integers as, as arguments, it also returns a new integer that is the result of some computation. So let's actually go ahead and store this in an intermediate variable here. And here we've got the code that we would expect from a function with this kind of signature. Namely, we are calling the function, passing in the two int arguments that we are getting, computing a result, and then finally returning that result from the whole function. And of course, we could also write it like this and completely getting rid of the intermediate variable. But I sometimes like to add more information and to make it a bit more explicit as to what's happening in my application. 